Heathcliff is often thought of as a low-rent Garfield ripoff, even though, as we all know, Heathcliff premiered in 1973, while Garfield didn't premiere until five years later in 1978. But there is something going on in Heathcliff comic strips that is not found anywhere else in comic strips. For to look at a Heathcliff comic strip is to stare into the mouth of madness. Join me, won't you, for a few examples of Heathcliff comics. I swear that these are all real Heathcliff comics, and I did not alter them in any way. So this one isn't too odd. Heathcliff has a lot of helmets. His helmets mostly reflect his wants. In this strip, Grandma Nutmeg is serving Thanksgiving dinner, and Iggy is pointing out that Heathcliff once again has put <laughs> that Heathcliff once again has put on his gravy helmet. I actually really love that Heathcliff has a bunch of helmets for different occasions. The Nutmegs have invited a vegetarian couple over for dinner. Heathcliff knows this and has put out his peas helmet. Imagine how cool it would be to be at dinner, and when the food comes out and you put on the corresponding helmet, you would be a modern day hero. This is where we start getting off into abstract concepts. I think Heathcliff is ready to steal any ham that has been ordered by a customer, so the deli guy is warning the customer to not order it. Heathcliff has his ham helmet and is just sitting there. <laughs> it's a very bold mood. Heathcliff is intimidating enough to the deli guy that he won't throw him out of the deli. Instead, he is hurting his business by making sure that the customers do not order ham. Another explanation could be that they are closing soon and Heathcliff is getting all the ham they don't sell, so the deli guy is making sure no more is sold, because he fears Heathcliff's wrath. This is where you start to see what makes Heathcliff maddening. Very often there is more than one interpretation for a Heathcliff comic. It's like a Rorschach test. Your interpretation of a Heathcliff comic tells as much about you as it does the comic itself. Grandpa Nutmeg has returned home, and it's a very ham-loving home. They even have a ham flag. I'll be honest, I would like a ham helmet. Heathcliff comics have this thing where someone comments to someone else about what is happening, but it is never what would be the most important and likely question. For instance, in this comic, Heathcliff, a cat, has a long, flowing white beard and is seated next to a giant trophy. Iggy says to the neighbor, competitive bearding, as if the obvious big question here is, what did that bearded cat win the trophy in? With these type of Heathcliff comics, I'd like to start off by adding, I know what you're thinking. I don't know what the hell this is, but Heathcliff looks like Grandma Nutmeg is dropping some serious knowledge on him about bees. So this one had me puzzled. I didn't know why Heathcliff's sandwich was flying away. I thought maybe since the other guy says whole wheat bread, this is a pun and is holy wheat bread, and those were angel wings. But I then thought that if it was supposed to be an angel, it would also have a halo. This is an example of a Heathcliff comic where someone comments on something that isn't the most questionable thing. In this case, Heathcliff, a cat, is at a construction site at lunchtime and has his own lunch pail. The fact that a sandwich flies away seems to make as much sense as all of that. Okay, so Heathcliff likes to eat birds because he's a cat. He puts birds on sandwiches and pizzas. He doesn't seem to kill them before trying to eat them though, so they often fly away from him. That's why the sandwich had wings and why this pizza box has wings. Heathcliff's father, Pops, is a convict. He is always wearing a striped prison outfit when he appears. I'm assuming he is locked up but gets supervised day trips to see his son. Heathcliff is a street cat who grew up hard, and this is the only life he knows. There's a lot going on here. The first and most obvious is that Heathcliff and Santa Claus seem to have some long-standing beef. The second thing is that Santa Claus is working in the complaints department of a <laughs> The second thing is that Santa Claus is working in the complaints department of a shopping mall. I don't know if this is supposed to be the real Santa Claus or just a mall Santa. Maybe this is where Heathcliff and Santa's beef started. Heathcliff is a tattooed badass who doesn't play by the rules and he doesn't care if Santa doesn't like it. This is a very invasive but very thorough mall Santa. Heathcliff's universe has a lot of guest stars. In this one, Smokey the Bear and Heathcliff are just hanging out talking about skinny jeans. Heathcliff is big into jeans. Jeans and helmets are two big parts of Heathcliff's fashion. <laughs> Not content to only use jeans as fashion, Heathcliff also uses them to fight his rival, Spike the Bulldog. I'm pretty sure that the jeans being orange are just a coloring error. Heathcliff has made the mice in the Nutmeg House wear jeans, and Grandpa Nutmeg is sick of it. I don't know. There's no way to take this other than that the plumbers had sex with Heathcliff. 
A lower back tattoo, or tramp stamp for you readers who aren't as woke and sensitive as I am, is a symbol in American culture of promiscuity. I suppose the plumber could just be a big fan of Heathcliff, but then why would the birds say that it's too much information? If you hired a plumber, and they happen to have a tattoo of a neighborhood cat, and then the birds said to you, too much information, you would know what the deal was. Heathcliff has sex with this plumber. End of story. Oh, sh